Hi. Last time we talked about the uh, features that are common or almost universal to every shaper that's been made. This time I'd like to talk about some of the accessory features or features that you may or may not find on a particular shaper. Most of these features are relegated to industrial size shapers uh, where those features could enhance the ability of somebody to manufacture something quickly or conveniently. Uh, not all shapers, again, will have these features, but you may or may not see them. The first of those shapers is a, or the first of those features, rather, excuse me, is a universal table. This is a standard table. It moves only vertically and horizontally. A universal table will also allow for a twist so that the table can be turned sideways to cut particular angles. The top of a universal table also has a bed that lifts or at an angle um, in the front. And with the combination of, of that lift and the twist of the table, compound angles are easily manufactured. And again, those can be manufactured on a shaper with a standard table, but it's more convenient with that universal table. Another feature that you might see is a tool lifter. Tool lifters are almost extremely rare, probably the rarest of the features that I'm discussing now. Um, as we discussed earlier, when the ram is making its forward cut and there's pressure backwards, the tool is unable to move. When the ram is retracting, the tool is free to lift and drag across the surface of the cut. As it drags across, that preserves the cutting edge. Now, if we were cutting a T-slot, which is something we'll show in the book in a later video, you may have the tool trapped inside a, a small surface, in which case, as you, you go forward at the, the forward portion of the ram stroke, it would be convenient to lift the, the clapper, lift the tool out of the work as it retracts. You don't want it retracting inside the work, or it may snag, breaking the tool, the work, or some other piece. Um, to that end, there are some shapers that have an accessory tool lifter attached to them. The tool lifter attaches to the clapper, the ram, and the column or body of the machine. And at the forward end of the stroke, as the ram begins its, its rearward travel, lift the clapper automatically and then drop it at the rear end of its stroke. Tool lifters are probably the most uncommon of features. Uh, because they were a bolt-on accessory, and so often they can be unbolted and, and by virtue of having been unbolted, thrown away or separated from the shaper during its life. Uh, another feature that you'll see on, on some larger industrial shapers is a power-down feed. This block right here is the power-down feed. This is simply a guard to protect your hands so you don't set them where the power-down feed will travel. The power down feed contains a spool which is activated by a can. The can, which I'll show you here, is screwed onto the side of the way and can be mounted in multiple positions along the ways. As you can see, it provides a camming surface for the spool inside the power down feed. As the power down feed hits this and moves to the side, it activates the, the compound. Now I'm going to put this back in. The shaper right now is toward the rear of its travel. So if I put this back in, I can push it. And along the side of it, we have engraved here the approximate amount of power down feed, or really the exact amount of power down feed if we were at the exact rear of our travel. It's approximate because it's very difficult to position the shaper uh, perfectly at the rear of its travel. So I'm going to set this up for 10 thousandths down feet right now. And I'm going to tighten this up because the, the constant jarring of the ram coming back against that cam will tend to move this backwards. Um, fortunately, that's a safe direction. It reduces the down feet um, from whatever it's set at to a progressively less and then non-existent. Uh, cut. Now, the down feed does not occur while the down feed lever is in the current position. Then you put the shaper into gear. Now we can see it moving back and, back and forth. Now, when I turn the power down feed at the rear of the 
the stroke, it's going to power down on the compound. I can engage this at any time because the, the down feed is not going to occur until the appropriate time during the stroke. Now, if you listen to the chamber, you can hear the small cam in the, in the ram moving back and forth. So at the, the rear of its treble, we hear that. Now I move it in, engage it, and now you can see the compound wheel turning. And right now we're turning just about 10 thousandths uh, per stroke. And you can see that I'm now taking a vertical cut. So we showed earlier taking a planing cut. We're now taking a vertical cut or a cut downward using the compound. You can also use the same kind of feed if you were cutting at an angle to make, say, a dovetail or a V-block or anything along those lines. So that, that's a good demonstration of the power down feed. I turn this off and the down feed will cease. Now if I stop the shaper at the rear of its stroke again, we're out of its way, I'll show you the, the final uh, feature that you may or may not find on a uh, larger shaper and that's rapid transits. Rapids allow you to move the table with, without the hand crank and usually in a much more rapid fashion, hence the name. So I'll move the motion lever toward me to bring the table my way and engage the rapid. And as you can see, the table is traveling in my direction. Now, this particular shaper has rapids left and right. Um, some shapers will actually have a rapid vertical as well that will allow you to raise and lower the table. Um, when you raise and lower the table, of course, you have to unlock the give to do so, as well as the, the front standards, which support the table. That's all for tonight. We'll see you next time. Thanks,